We will be routing the power and data cables for connecting the radar antenna, VHF antenna and video camera through the boat. Covers must be removed, suitable cable routes determined, as well as where to put the distribution point. Our distribution point is near the fuse box on the starboard side. Luckily, our boat already has some pre-installed empty ductwork that we can route our cable through. Nevertheless, a cable routing aid is something that will always make the job easier. Some tools and installation material are needed for routing the cables. We will be routing Ethernet and Raynet cables to connect the network switch with a chart plotter, as well as a SeaTalk NG backbone cable and a VHF cable to connect the VHF antenna. And of course, the cables for the power supply. To avoid twisting the cables during installation, we recommend unwinding all wires neatly beforehand and combining into one single strand. Use masking tape or insulating tape to do this, as it is flexible and can easily be removed afterwards. Make sure the ends are taped up tightly so that they can easily be pulled through and individual cables do not get caught. This will also protect any plugs from damage. Wrap the cable up tightly and mark it with tape every 30 to 50 centimeters. This will prevent it from twisting and make the whole thing easier to pull. When we have finished preparing the cables, we can start routing. In our case, the first step will be to run the cable from the engine compartment into the ceiling panel. Fortunately, we can use an empty cable duct through which we first push a cable routing aid to which we have attached a pull string that can be used to route further cables in the future. We now attach the routing aid to our bundle. We don't want it to come detached from our cable, so we attach it to about 30 centimeters of our strand. A few twists and tugs later, the cable emerges through the opening in the ceiling panel, but there are still a few more meters to be routed. The cable can now be fed through the engine compartment to the starboard side. Make sure that the cables do not run directly past hot surfaces or objects that emit strong electromagnetic radiation. Using the routing aid, we can get the cable into the starboard cabin where the boat's power lines are located. At this point, we split our cable bundle as the voltage cables will be connected to the corresponding fuses and the data cables will continue to the helm. The Raynet cable from the ceiling panel has to be extended using a Raynet connector and another Raynet cable. The data cables and the VHF antenna cable should run behind the switch cabinet. To do this, we again use our routing aid and connect it to the data and antenna cables and then carefully pull them back. The cables are now at our distribution point and can be routed from there to the individual units.